and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. You know, our great state is known for its abundance of great lake fishing opportunities. And oftentimes it's the big lakes like Texoma or Eufaula or Grand that kind of steal the spotlight from great city lake fishing opportunities like this one right here. So today we're going to be focusing on smaller city lake fishing opportunities. And to do that, we're going to bring you two segments one on Crowder City Lake and one on Talawanda One, just north of McAllister. Now there's several parallels between these two segments. First off, they're both in southeast Oklahoma in the generally the same area. Secondly, both of our anglers are game wardens that fish these lakes on their days off. And third, well, they're both focusing on Florida strain largemouth bass during the spawn. First up, we're going to Talawanda One with Garrett Harley. And interestingly, this is Oklahoma's oldest lake, built in 1902. This time of year, the water temps right now, it says 66.7 degrees. They should be pretty shallow on beds right now. The males are, they should be uh, fixing a bed right now for the female, and the female should be locked in here pretty soon within the next couple weeks or so. Um, I'm hoping to find some, some bedding fish. There's a lot of, a lot of brush and, and lily pads up on the bank, and it's prime conditions right now for for bedding fish uh, with it being this warm uh, water. Today we're fishing at uh, Talawanda Lake number one here in McAllister, Oklahoma. I, I really like these lakes for several reasons. Um, they're close to home. Um, they're great lakes. Number one is stocked with Florida largemouth uh, bass, and they're, they get really big. Um, it's just it's a great opportunity to come out here and, and go fishing without having to go to a, a larger body of water like you fall or uh, a lot of people don't know about them, but the ones that do, I mean, these lakes get hammered fairly hard. Um, the one behind me is uh, number that's lake number two. Um, they're they're both really good lakes. Um, I just love to come out here. It's pretty out here. The water's pretty, um, and it's usually a safe bet that you can catch some pretty nice fish out of here. The early spring is whenever the big ones bite, and right now it should be it should still be a good time. Uh, the water temp over here is telling me it's almost 70 degrees over here. It's warmed up considerably. But it's a it's an old lake. It's, been here since it was built in 1902. It's a real pretty lake, and the other lake right next to it was built in 1924, I believe. And there's a canal connecting the two, and whenever the water is running over, spilling into number two, it, you could just sit there by that, that water coming in, and you can just smoke them over there. There's a there's a big difference in the the, the fish structure and between this lake and, and number two. The lakes as close as they are together are very different lakes. Um, number one is it's got a lot of lily pads in it. It's got some deep structure in it. Um, like I said, it's got Florida's in it. Number two doesn't have very many big fish in it. It's got a lot of spotted bass and it's got some deep structure, uh, deep rocks on the north side of the lake. Um, but what they do have in common is they have good bedding areas, which is what you need for good largemouth bass production. Oh, there's one. He's chewing on it. Here we go. Red shad wormed it again. Now 
nice little fish. He's, he's fat. He's got a nice stomach on him. A real, real healthy looking fish in this lake. We'll let him go, let him grow up and get bigger. <laughs> That's fun right there. I love catching them on plastics. You can feel them peck it. I felt it, peck, peck. And he's sitting there chewing on it. You just give him just a little bit. And you, I saw my line just kind of taking off sideways. And uh, he, was, he was on there. Well, that's fun right there. I just got my heart rate up. <laughs> just catching one little fish like that, and that's what it's all about. There's one right there. There he is. This is where the heavy line comes into play because he's wound up all in those lily pads. Uh-oh, can't get him out. Stay on there, buddy. Oh, he's still on there. There he is. Looks like a little male, probably up on a nest. Real pretty green fish. They're real pretty fish out here in this super clear water. Man, that's fun. <laughs> oh. He tore up my worm. I'm gonna have to get me a new one. About ripped it in half. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, he was way up there in the shallow. I mean, it's probably a foot of water or less up there where he bit. He had to have been on a bed. The sun came out and it was really warm and it kind of died down a little bit. And those fish might have pulled off the banks a little bit and moved out to deeper structure. And uh, I decided to go fish a little bit deeper water and I, there's, a, there's, some, there's some offshore brush piles and some some deep structure on this lake that's really good this time of year. There's a brush pile out here that's in about 18 foot of water and there's usually it's usually good for one big one and I don't know and there's one right there there he is that's a pig that's a pig Stay on there, baby, stay on there. Come here, stay on there. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh yes, sir. That's what it's all about right here. I <laughs> thank you, Lord. Oh my gosh. Oh. I did not I didn't know if I was on that brush pile or not. I I felt like there might have he might have been on there. I thought I'd hit a piece of that brush pile or a stick or something. That's a big female right there, and she's Oh, it looks like she's almost spawned out and she's kind of moved out, but uh, nice fish. Still amazes me that I'm sitting there talking about it and that fish was on there. It's, <laughs> I've never had anything like that happen before. It's, it's a, that's a good feeling. You just let it, I just like to let it sink down all the way to the bottom and make sure I'm on the bottom and then I'll start slowly working it back towards that brush pile and if he's there, nine times out of ten, he'll hit it. And having just caught one off of it, they might be spooked out of that area, so it might it might take them a while to come back to that area. Um, but they move in and out all day from that brush pile. I mean, they'll they might move up shallow early, and with this sunny weather being warm out and this crystal clear water, they might move out later in the afternoon. It makes them a little tougher to catch, but like I said, sometimes you gotta 
thump them right on the head with that lure to get them to bite. Especially these finicky Floridas in here. I don't think we could have hit that last one any better than what we did. Those fish were probably spooked out of there after, after catching one. So on areas like that, you usually have to move out. And, and uh, I knew I had to probably leave. So I left for about 20 to 30 minutes and hit a stretch of bank for a while. I knew maybe if I came back to it, I could have some success and maybe having an, another one in there maybe, I, I wasn't sure. That was a good thump. I don't know if she's got it or not. Oh yeah, baby. Stay there. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's an absolute pig. Oh my gosh. Oh, stay down, stay down. Oh baby, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. There's the, oh my gosh. Uh, oh, oh my, look at that sow of, oh my gosh. There's a hook in her throat. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. That is a tank. Can you believe that? What did I say about that brush pile? Oh, so much fun to catch these beauties right there. That's, that's why I do what I do, because I love to fish and get to do this kind of thing. But we're gonna let her go and so she can make some more babies. Some of these smaller bodies of water, like, like Talawan 1 and 2, um, a lot of people overlook them because they're not a, a big body of water like Eufaula or Grand Lake or Keystone or any of these big lakes in Oklahoma that, that they think is the best place to catch fish. Um, there, there are several little sm smaller lakes in, in um, Oklahoma. They're city lakes, and they all have good fish in them. Coming up next, we'll head a little north to Crowder City Lake, this time fishing with game warden Shane Fields as he tries his hand at some springtime largemouth bass. We're going to be fishing for largemouth bass, and we're using weightless Cinco's, uh, chartreuse dipped. Uh, this water's fairly clear, and uh, just right after a hard rain. It's been raining all night. So they may be a little bit of finicky uh, to bite. The water temperature is 70.2, and uh, we're gonna give it a try. Today we are at Crowder City Lake. Uh, it's less than 100 acres. We have largemouth, uh, crappie, all your species that you would normally find in all the other typical lakes. What's so good about this lake is we have Florida high string in here and that's one of the reasons we were here to try to catch some of those big Floridas today. Here we go. Good one. Oh my yes. It's a good one guys. Stay on there. Stay on there. There we go. All right. Come on one more time. There we go, guys. Finally got us one. All right. Not bad. We've been getting a lot of bites, so I figure we're going to start getting more uh, in this area. We're going to go ahead and release this fish. See how color, the colorful they are? This clear water makes that coloration real pretty on, on these fish. Go ahead and release her. 
All right, here we go. I'm gonna release her real quick. All right, there we go. Look at the markings on that bass. Pretty. It's a nice colored up bass. Occasionally you see some of these markings on the bass. It's no nothing, just the pigmentation, a coloration part of them, but it kind of gives them a little bit of character. This looks like a male. Your males are typically anywhere from two to three pounds. Uh, they're the ones that uh, go off into the deep water and lure the, the big females back. And when one female decides that they're going to do their thing, the female will actually follow this, this male all the way back. And, um, but it's kind of cool. This is, this is definitely a male. Your typical moving baits, such as chatter baits, spinner baits, uh, or the typical baits that you could anybody could use. We have a lot of moss and floating vegetation in this small lake, so you're going to constantly get small uh, type moss on your baits. But if you're moving them fairly decent, you're going to get these fish to bite and and have a, a, an awesome time doing it. Well, the male. If there's anything within a four to five foot radius where you threw, he's gonna come after that bait and get it out of the bedded area. And once that female spawns out and her fry hatches, that male's gonna be there until the fry hatch, protecting it. And um, even whenever they hatch, you'll see the, a group of fry in an area and you can bet money that there's gonna be a male right there guarding those shad, not shad, but fry. And um, so in bass tournaments, we look for that kind of sign that when we see the fry popping around and uh, we throw over there, we, we know we're gonna probably catch that male. And typically your male's anywhere from two to four pounds. Um, so there he is, good one. There we go. Now this is definitely a male. No, I'm tell I'm sorry. This is a small female. See how flat she is? She spawned it out quite a bit. Her head's larger than her body. This this is the female that's already been spawned out. And you can see the larger head and the smaller slender body. So she's already done her thing and she's uh just out here feeding. All right, turn that back one. We got a lot of bait fish that's suspended right now from four to six foot. It tells me that they're, they're kind of finicky right now when you get suspended bass. These sinkos play into our favor because we get it right down to the right level to them and it's slow falling. They think it's uh, something died and they're there to eat it. Oh yes, monster. Well, I say he's a monster, he's a five plus. Oh, yes. One more time, baby. One more time. Oh, yeah. Looky here, looky here. This is what we're after. Yes, sir. Right there, guys. Love it. 
these smaller impounded water can be amazing. And um, the springtime fishing for these smaller impoundments of water, uh, if you guys take your time, you can catch these nice bass just like this. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and let her go. Uh, I always tell people if however long you can hold your breath, that's what this fish can do. So I don't wanna have it out of the water that much longer, but uh, this is what we're after, guys. Got some pretty fins, the iridescence color. Uh, yeah, there you go, baby. There she goes. Today we're using uh, a five alt owner's hook, and um, I'm just going to be tying a, a polymer. It's a double knot. Uh, we're using 20 pound uh, fluorocarbon cigar. Uh, I like a little bit stouter line when I know I'm after bigger fish um, cinch that down um, today is a watermelon red five inch cinco and uh, when you when you rig these up it, you can you can rig them wacky style in the middle but i kind of like it, it to texas rig it with weightless do that put that in there it's kind of already got a built-in slip there for not hanging up. Now, on sunny days, I may just leave it just like this. Um, but on cloudy days like this, and if you have any kind of dinginess of the water, I like to dip it where we got a little bit of chartreuse on it. And what happens is those fish target, they see that chartreuse barely floating down, and you have better success whenever, uh, to me, on cloudy days, whenever you uh, dip dye your bait. He's after my Cinco. Oh, perfect! You see that? Oh, wow! <laughs> I literally watched this fish chase this Cinco and I started slowing it down and then he just right up there and grabbed it. Oh yeah. Oh, come on, baby. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Another nice largemouth bass. I love it. Yeah, it's, this one's a little bit bigger. She still got a, a, a belly on her. Nice one. Literally hadn't been two minutes since I caught that five pounder. Um, I was working that finesse jig or finesse bait over across some uh, standing timber and I watched this fish follow me in and I positioned myself where uh, I knew she was after it and immediately when it come across that log, she, she got after it. You could see her old mouth explode under the water. I watched her literally bite it under water. What amazing feeling. This is gonna be probably close to six pounds, six and a quarter, but what amazing bass. All right, there you go, big girl. Catch you again. Love it. The main thing I would like to tell you guys is always don't be selfish, bring a kid out here. Let them experience this uh, moment. And those memories that you build with these kids will last forever. And this is a prime example. You can take your kids out to an impoundment that's loaded with great fish and have a time of your life. Man, talk about a couple great days on the water. Those were some awesome fish, weren't they? Next time that you're looking for an outing, don't overlook the great city lake fishing opportunities all over Oklahoma. Thanks for joining us today. For all of us at your wildlife department, I'm Todd Craighead, and we'll see you right here next time on Outdoor Oklahoma.